Hello everyone and welcome to today's video tutorial. Today you will learn about data modeling with SQL Alchemy in Python. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and also write your comments in the comment section of this video tutorial. Let's go. Before we dive into the implementations of data modeling with SQL Alchemy and Python, let's understand what is data modeling and what are the steps to uh, implement data modeling. Data modeling is a process of creating a visual representation of the data entities and their dashboards in a database. It is an essential part of database uh, design as it helps to ensure that the database is structured in a way that is efficient and easy to use. There are three main types of data modeling. The first one is the first one is conceptual data modeling. This model represents the high-level concepts and relationship between the data without worrying about the specific implementation details. And the second one is logical data models. This model refine the conceptual data models by adding more detail about the data structure, such as the names and types of attributes. And the third one is physical data models. These models provide the most detailed level of representation of the data and are used to create the actual database schema. The most common types of data modeling language is the entity relationship diagram. ARDs use the graphical symbols to represent uh, entities, attributes, and their relationships. Here is an example of ARD uh, or entity relationship diagrams, so students and courses. The student enrolls in a course. So the, this already shows that uh, there are two entities in the database, the students and courses. The students can enroll in multiple courses and courses can have multiple uh, students. That's, uh, so courses can have multiple students enrolled in them. So the relationship between students and courses is a many to many relationship. So this is so-called ARD diagram or entity relationship diagram. There are some steps to implement data modeling. The first one is we have to uh, identify the entities. Entities are the objects or concepts that you want to store data about in your database. For example, in uh, a school database, entities might include the students, courses, and teachers. So the entities are the nouns that can be uh, uh, represent the objects. And identify the attributes. Once we identify the entities, we have to identify the attributes for each entity. Attributes are the properties of entities that describe the entity. For example, student attributes might include name, address, and date of birth. And the third one is identify the relationship. What are the relationship between the uh, entities? So we have to uh, identify their relationship, one-to-one, one-to-many, or many-to-many -many relationships. So relationships are the connection between entities. For example, a student can be enrolled in multiple courses, and a course can have multiple students enrolled in it. So those are the relationships. So we have to make sure that uh, they uh, have the uh, relationship between entities. And once we identify the relationship between uh, entities, we have to create a conceptual data model. The conceptual data model is a high-level re representation of the entities, attributes, and relationships in the database. So this can be done using entity relationship diagram. And create a logical data model. The logical data model refines the conceptual data model by adding more detail about the data structure, such as the names and types of the attributes. So well, we have to just uh, refine the conceptual data once we conceptually uh, model the data. So we have to create a logical uh, model to that data to refine the conceptual data model by adding more details about the data structure. Lastly, we create physical data model with, with that is to store our data, physical like database. So the physical data model provides the most detailed levels of representation of the data, and that is used to create the actual database schema. So we have to go through the steps to implement uh, data modeling in SQL Alchemy and Python. So we have to identify entities, 
and identify the attributes of each entity that describes uh, the entities and identify the relationship with each one entities, create conceptual data model, uh, then create a logical data model. And finally, we create physical data model that can store the details of the entities. Okay, that's good. Let's go on. So data modeling in Python can be done using a variety of uh, libraries such as uh, CPR Kami, Pui, Pony ORM, Django models. Uh, SQL Alchemy is a popular library for object relational mapping, which allows you to map Python objects to database tables. So this is the most popular and uh, powerful uh, SQL Alchemy that help us to uh, uh, map the Python objects to the database tables. So we are going to implement our data modeling using SQL Alchemy. To perform data modeling in Python using SQL Alchemy, you can follow uh, the steps. The first one is you have to uh, install the SQL Alchemy library if you haven't already installed on your computer. So you can install uh, SQL Alchemy using pip install SQL Alchemy. So you can uncomment the following line to run and run the cell and to uninstall the SQL Alchemy library on your Jupyter notebook. So that is easy way to implement data modeling with SQL Alchemy. And the, the second step is import necessary uh, classes, uh, modules. So here uh, you are going to import the classes, create engine, column, integer, string. Uh, those are very important uh, classes you have to import from SQL Alchemy module. And the other is declarative base. This is uh, another module. You have to create SQL Alchemy RM, object relational mapping and the uh, session maker that uh, help us to store uh, our sessions. Uh, so you have to import those uh, classes from uh, SQL Alchemy module. Okay, let's go to the third step. The third step is create an engine and session. Initialize the database connection and session. That is uh, very good. So you have to create your database engine. The database engine, you can use uh, different database engines such as uh, MySQL, uh, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, and so on. But here uh, I'm going to use SQLite. SQLite is uh, 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 one of the database uh, engine that uh, help us to store data. And you can define the database engine by specifying uh, the database uh, name. And session makers, uh, you can uh, bind the engine to store in a local session and you can uh, start the session, you can declare the base database using declarative class, declarative underscore base class, which is imported from SQL alchemy.orm objects relational mapping module. Okay, let's go on. Uh, then once we have done this part, which is creating an engine and session, which means initializing the, the database connection and session, so you have to run each cell to uh, initialize the database connection. And we go uh, to the fourth step. The fourth step is about create a model class, define a model class that represents a table in the database. So here we have uh, an entity that is a, a student. So I have already defined the entity class here and the entity uh, relationship diagram, student is one entity and course is another entity, but I'm going to uh, create a student entity only. And I have to uh, define all the attributes. And so you can uh, go uh, to the fourth step. So you can define the table name, That's, that is the physical uh, 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 model, data model that stores our data. And you can define the attributes, the attributes that or the properties of the entities, the student entity. So student has ID that identify uh, each student, name of the student, age, birth, or birth date, and so on. You can define more attributes, but here are uh, enough for uh, this tutorial. So you can uh, define uh, the types of uh, each entity uh, by default uh, ID is an integer, which is auto increment. So this is called a column name in the database that represents the uh, attribute of the student. And uh, uh, for example, name is a string and age is integer. And by default, the ID is a primary key because each uh, student has unique ID. 
Okay, once you define the student class, uh, or that is the class name is the entity in the data uh, modeling concept. Okay, then the next is create tables, create the tables based on the defined model. So you can call that model using uh, metadata.create all and call that engine and uh, that table going to be uh, created. Yeah, so uh, this is the information which is uh, in the normal uh, disabled table that create table, student test, integer, blah, blah, blah. But this is the easiest way to do, uh, create your data model. Okay, now we can insert uh, data in, in our physical database, uh, in our physical data storage. So uh, we can define new students. Uh, we call the class uh, we defined here, the class name, and we assign values to uh, each attribute or property uh, for the constructor. So this uh, student object can be uh, called in the session.add uh, method and pass these objects to the session. And we finally uh, call the commit method to save our uh, change, OK? Uh, so far, so good. And uh, we are in the seventh step. The seventh step is query data. We retrieve data from our database using queries, uh, which was uh, stored previously. Now we can query uh, all users or uh, students and print their details. We can use uh, session.query and we call the constructor or object name student and we call all method. All method uh, is used to retrieve all information from that uh, table. And we iteratively uh, print each student information from that table. We use for loop. Yeah, here uh, the information is just uh, retry student one, student two, and so on, OK? And on. You can also update uh, the data in the database. Uh, update is one of the most uh, crude operation in database modeling, OK? You can session query student filter by what information you want to update. Uh, you can add the time if you update one information, one row in the database, so you can uh, uh, updates that information. So first you have to filter uh, that information before updating, okay? Then if that uh, information is existing in the database, you can update to, uh, for example, age. Previously I was uh, inserted 30, and now I can update uh, that age into uh, 35 and commit that information to change in the database, okay? Now I can say, uh, run this and uh, let's see that this information the first row was updated and uh, 35 uh, is the age of that user. OK, lastly, we can uh, delete the data if uh, not necessarily uh, uh, in the uh, existing the database. So you can uh, also filter the same. Uh, filtering is the same in the updating. So once you have, uh, exist that data, you can call the delete op uh, option and uh, from session and you can uh, pass that delete to student uh, uh, object. And this, you can commit that commit used to uh, update that information. So now that uh, data uh, can be deleted from database. So I hope these are very uh, useful in a tutorial. And uh, here uh, you have to make sure to handle exceptions and errors appropriately in the production environment. So this is just for uh, learning purpose for uh, production, you have to make sure that uh, adding uh, exception handling to handle errors because that is very important. This step-by-step -step guide showed you uh, uh, should give you a solid foundation for data modeling with SQL Alchemy in Python. Uh, you can adjust the code based on your specific requirements and use cases. And uh, here are some uh, tips for data modeling. So you can uh, start with a clear understanding of the business requirements that the first thing as a data uh, engineer is uh, you have to understand, clearly understand the business requirements, what data you need to store in the database uh, uh, in order to support your business processes and normalize the data. That is, uh, this means that organize the data into tables in a way that minimizes redundancy and anomalies. And uh, use consistent naming conventions. This will make the database easier to understand and ma maintain and document the data model. This will help you uh, uh, 
and others to understand the, the structure of the database and how it works. So uh, data modeling is an essential part of data is designed by following this uh, steps. Uh, you can create a data model that will help you to build a database that is efficient and easy to use and scalable. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching today.